This is the Art Marketing Minute with Eric Rhodes, author of the Amazon best-selling book, Make More Money Selling Your Art. In the Marketing Minute, we answer your questions to help your art career. Brought to you by artmarketing.com, the place to go to learn more about marketing. Now, here's your host, art magazine publisher, Eric Rhodes. Thank you, Jim Kipping, and welcome to the Art Marketing Minute. My name is Eric Rhodes, and I'm sure, like me, you're stuck at home. Uh, I've been working on a lot of things to help everybody, so uh, I've been working like 10 hours a day just trying to keep up on my job, plus trying to keep up on everything else. But uh, we've been doing some free art instruction videos every day, some in-depth ones, uh, at about 3 p.m. Eastern. They're on Facebook Live and they're provided on the page Streamline Art Video. You can go there, follow it, and then get the Facebook Lives every day. There's no charge on those. We're also helping galleries with some profiles to help them stay visible. You can read those at fineartconnoisseur.com. Also, I'm gonna veer off format today, and instead of answering questions like I normally do, I recorded an interview on survival for artists in times like these with marketing guru, Jay Abraham, which we're going to get to in just a minute. I want to mention, because I get a lot of questions, use this opportunity. Due to coronavirus, the Plen Air Convention, which was scheduled for May, has been rescheduled to August 11 through 14, and it's moving to Santa Fe. The good news is this is our first summertime convention, so people who normally couldn't come can come. And I'm proud to announce that Kevin McPherson is going to step up and do a pre-convention workshop for the uh, 10th and 11th before the convention begins. And that's something you don't want to miss. Uh, It's also the best time to be in Santa Fe. It's the week when Indian Market starts. And uh, it's the biggest tourism weekend for Santa Fe. A great time to paint. And so come in, do the convention, hang out for Indian Market, and then go home, do some more painting or whatever. You don't want to miss this one. It's a convention like no other. It's artists together watching instruction from the world's top artists in in, uh, landscape painting. And sometimes we bring in others. And then uh, plus a big expo of art materials. We have four stages. We have oil painting, watercolor, pastel, and then we have a second demo stage. And we also then are uh, demoing in the um, in the expo hall, and we do art shows. We have art for sale, uh, and of course, art marketing boot camp every morning, where I'm training people on art marketing. So that's an opportunity for you. What else have I forgotten? I don't know. There's probably more. You can learn about it at plenairconvention.com. Also, there is an art competition we do called Plein Air Salon. Even though it's Plein Air Salon, we have all kinds of figure portraits, still life, all kinds of uh, different things in Plein Air Salon. It usually gives the award at the convention. So we've decided to extend this year's competition, giving you more chances to win. We have uh, monthly now, monthly competitions you can win and win money in, but also you have the opportunity to win the grand prize of 15,000 cash, and there's 23,000 in total grand prizes. And uh, there are now three more months that you can enter, and you enter at plenairsalon.com. If you've never looked at it, check it out, see if it's for you. Also, I've had questions. Is our figurative art convention and expo, which is being held in Baltimore at the end of October, is that still going on? Yes, the face conference, is still going on. We've got some amazing speakers, uh, too many to mention here, but Juliet Aristides, Mary White is making an appearance, which is great. These are people doing demos on stage, Rose Franson, uh, demos on stage. Then we have a giant studio where we have live models and you can practice and learn. Uh, There's more about that at Figurative Art Convention. For now, let's get right to the interview with marketing guru, Jay Abraham. I'm pleased today to have a a really very important guy on the line, Jay Abraham, who is the $100,000 a day marketing consultant. He has built many, many businesses and helped billions of dollars worth of businesses, helped them grow. Uh, He's an author of many books. And I asked Jay to come on and talk to you about what you might want to do as an artist or as an art gallery Uh, in this moment when we're all a little questioning about coronavirus and staying home and what should we do with our businesses and is the economy going to crash? Jay has uh, lived through four economic disasters and looks at this as opportunity. Jay, welcome. Thank you, Eric. Uh, I'm pleased to be here. 
So Jay, um, we're going to try to keep this at about 20 or 30 minutes. And, and the idea here is what, if, if I'm an artist or I'm an art gallery and everything has come to a screeching halt, what is the first thing you think I should be doing? Uh, I think you should be strategically recognizing that this is arguably one of the greatest opportunities you will ever have to gain attentive mind share. In, in a very unusual way, it's not dissimilar to the fact that uh, art galleries do well in environments where people are stuck in, uh, in a captive place for a long time and keep repetitively visiting and, and, and uh, getting connected and bonded to the art. I think today, Eric, You've got people who most of their day and lives have been frenetic and basically coming and going and they give a very meager amount of attention to anything. And now they're homebound and yeah, they're working from home, but nobody can stay on the phone or on their computer or on their, <clears throat> their device for that kind of a long period. They are going to spend qualitative time getting, uh, getting, uh, attached to different things. You've got this wonderful, wonderful concept called art. Art inspires, art uh, salves, art uh, electrifies, exactly what people need. I think today artists should advertise, they should offer to uh, get on the phone, spend time sharing with anybody interested you know, their motivation, their background, you know, the methodology, media they do, and they should use this to own Mindshare. In your magazine, for example, you've got great collectors, great art investors, great uh, advocates, enthusiasts. I can't imagine, I know it's a very horrific time, it's unprecedented, but art has transcended every you know every known period in in history it's not going to be abandoned now and people need the inspiration and the connection and you can do lots of things first thing is make yourself available make yourself known don't stop make sure that the beauty the majesty the the uh, allurement the the therapeutic aspects of your art is even more evident and make yourself available to connect with people. I don't know if that answer is a little bit more protracted. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I, I want to probe that just a little bit. That was very good. Uh, the, um, uh, the question is going to be, um, I, you know, I'm afraid of the future. I don't know what the future brings. Uh, you know, I, I, I just need to stop doing what I'm doing. And yet, there's, there's a sense of momentum that's lost if they stop. There's also a sense of opportunity lost. So you and I were talking earlier about this, but just for the benefit of everybody, in the Great Depression, uh, there was a dominant serial by the name of Post, which had like a 90% market share. And uh, there was a startup that literally started right at the beginning of the Great Depression. And it was Kellogg's, and they had no market share. And Post in their infinite wisdom said, we're rich, we're successful, we're not going to advertise, we're just going to get through this period of time. Meanwhile, Kellogg took everything they had and even stuff they probably couldn't afford and they put it towards marketing and advertising themselves. And Post ignored them and said, you know, we're big, they're never going to hurt us. And then at the end of the Great Depression, Kellogg had the lion's share of the market and they've never lost it since then. Can you talk about the, the importance of branding, even if people may or may not be buying at this time, the importance of using this as an opportunity to establish their brand? Well, absolutely. First of all, again, what I said earlier is, is true. In normal times, you get someone thumbing through and they're so frenetic. Now, we're we're consciously trying to focus on various the items, issues, uh, uh, activities that are going to give us solace. And we are actually 
forcing ourselves to pay more attention. If you can use this access period to elevate and preempt yourself against the maddening crowd, you can own that crowd, certainly when you get back in, you know, into normality or normalcy. But, you know, all estimates are, even if it's horrific, it's going to be, you know, uh, a few months, maybe longer, but if it's a few months and during that time, you can establish yourself as a dominant force, you can make yourself more elevated, more, more preemptive, more connected. What that means to you when everything shakes out is very honestly with all uh, sincerity, you win and your counterparts will play havoc trying to catch up, number one. Number two is, you know, it, 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 for the modest cost, I don't know what it costs to advertise in your, uh, in your media, but geez, for that modest cost, the ability to own the mind of the market that you've already identified, you know they are serious buyers of art, you know they are literally uh, people who own art, and you know that they are people who appreciate the intangibles that art represents. And the majority of them, I don't really think are, are gonna be totally devoid of the capacity to buy art. They might defer, maybe an artist will make some arrangements on terms. But the point is you've never had a, what I call a, a perfect storm. And yes, it's crisis and yes, it's horrific, but you also have deep focused attention and you have the chance to get them to reattend over and over again, not unlike they would, I don't want to use a cruise ship because it's got some bad connotations, but a cruise <laughs> ship sells so much art because they visit it, they leave, they visit it, they leave, it captivates. They're in a mindset of, opening up their sensory abilities. This is more evident right now than anybody can possibly exist. And I would say if I were an artist, I probably, and I'm not saying this to patronize you, Eric, I would double up. I might try to negotiate a rate for two ads with you, but I'd double up because I want to make my art so powerfully and positively haunting that I knew that I was gonna own the you know the responsiveness of your marketplace which you've uh you've kept you've cultivated and you've 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 acquired and you've organized and you've attracted at very expensive I, mean, I know what you had to go through to build your your readership and i know that readership is is primo great i wouldn't want to abandon it i want to own it that's just the truth during uh during the 2004 uh 2008 recession I called an art dealer buddy of mine in New York and I said, you know, what's happening? Because I knew he sold expensive art and he dealt with a lot of the people who, uh, who read our magazine because we, ha we have over 300 billionaires that read it. And I said, are, have they stopped buying? Because I was hearing, you know, everybody's going to stop buying. He said, no, they haven't stopped buying. He said, but instead of buying $200,000 paintings two or three at a time, they're buying fifty thousand dollar paintings two or three at a time," he said. So they've reduced. But the one thing that I think a lot of us forget is that people with money still have money. Yes. Would you yeah, agree with right. that? Yeah. No, you're right. Well, also, you made a point that I was trying to make, and I was struggling for a word. You know how you can't get the right word. You have curated your readership, and I don't think people understand. You are allowing an artist the chance to go when every human being that we know of, except for a few exceptions in, in the United States, certainly, and most of the world are homebound. They are sitting, they have time. They want to escape the complexities of their business. They want therapeutic, you know, uh, you know, a, a refreshing alternative, you have a chance to connect with them and bond with them now, honest to goodness, not trying to capitalize on the, the sadness of the times. But this is genuinely a situation where adversity is truly opportunity. 
you're not going to get that attention. You're not going to get that re-attention. You're not going to get that, that, that fulfillment of sensory need at the depth and the dimension that you can get right now, other than if they were locked, you know, for three days in your studio or in your, or in your uh, art gallery, and you aren't going to be able to do that. So this is opportunity, honest to goodness, strategic opportunity here. Yeah, you know, and, and you're not necessarily going to pe- reach those people with your social media, because it, unless they're following you, you know, we all have social media followers, but we, we sometimes forget that they're our friends, not necessarily our customers, or that every, every Facebook post we make only gets sent to 3% of the people who's watching it. And so, and then those people might miss it. I want, I would tell you a story um, and get your comments on this. Uh, in 2008, there was an art gallery. I won't use its name. It's still in business. It started up when the recession started. And I since had a discussion with the owner of that gallery uh, who has since sold it. And I said, uh, what were you thinking starting up in 2008? He says, look, I was a business consultant. I spent my life understanding recessions and I, and I understood the opportunity. He said, I knew the biggest and the best, the biggest galleries would say, we're hurting, we're going to cut our marketing budget. And he said, so I started up at that time. He said, uh, seven or eight big galleries stopped advertising entirely. Others reduced the size of their ads. He said, I knew that once they were out of sight, they were out of mind. And once they did that, if I was visible, then I would be able to take those customers. He said, so even though they were all doing less business, you know, I got the 10% who would, would have been buying from this guy and 10% from this lady. And he said, we actually made a lot of money during the recession. And then when it was all over, we had all these collectors, they were in our pocket, and we became huge as a result of it. Yeah, no. And Eric, I was thinking because, you know, if given the window, and I don't know what your deadlines are, but they could do some really inventive things since everybody now is doing, and I was on the phone with some of the people uh, today that are doing amazing things with uh, video conferencing. You could You could change your ad to invite them to you know, watch you create or discuss and talk to the artist. You could do things that they would never have the time, the motivation, the need, and the uh, and the desire to do in normal times. I mean, this is such an opportunity to bond and get penetrating and and preemptive access if you use the same creativity that you use to forge your, your, you know, your media, your, your canvas, your, your metals, whatever the, the things that you're creating, and you use it to forge the connection you're going to make with these collectors that exist within that very well and very hard won curated readership that you've, you've concentrated for them. Yeah, I really do mean this. Uh, it's, in the scope of the rest of their their artistic life, and they are artistic entrepreneurs, they have to realize this. If they create for any reason other than to retain it in their own uh, house, then they are an entrepreneur. An entrepreneur has to be, you're either strategic or you're reactive. If you're going to be reactive, you might as well get out of the, the field. If you're going to be strategic, capitalize you know it's it's the the latin carpe diem you have to seize the moment and it's a very strategic it's not uh it's not pie in the sky if you think about it pragmatically logically intelligently you have these very well capable people who can spend their money who own art who will continue to own art and these are people that will own art you know they have no place to put it they might have walls galore. They have collections they rotate. They have art they put in different places. They'll buy art and donate it, lend it. They'll leave it in their basement. They'll leave it in a vault, in a, in a storage. So utilize this opportunity to bond and connect and use your artistic creativity and channel it more into your entrepreneurial creativity. So the same things apply to art galleries, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. 
this is their chance to connect at a deeper level. I mean, you know, right now, I can't remember what they're calling them, but there are all these parties going on online, which are, you know, they're Watch parties. Watch Part parties. Yeah. I mean, I think that galleries can do some wonderful things, including what I just said. You can do, you can do uh, shows. You can go into their, the, the artist studio. You can have the artist basically create. You can, you can, uh, you can do three dimensional. If it's, if it's, uh, uh, you know, uh, if it's in metal, if it's not, if it's not a canvas, you can do so many things. And the truth of the matter, as you said, maybe, maybe a true collector is going to reduce the amount they spend per piece, but they're not going to reduce. And in fact, and probably will happen, most of these people are pretty astute buyers. So they might be astute negotiators, but if they start collecting artists that they weren't before, even if they try to negotiate a bit with you, when they start collecting you, it'll have more emotional connection because of what's going on now to them than if they bought it during normal times. And that theoretically, but, but logically will have them more compelled to want to buy more from you. It's just what logic. In the Put in the door once you get them as a collector. Yeah, and better now because it's going to have much more meaning to them, I think, because of the, the associative time and the emotional need they have for therapeutic fulfillment. You know, when, uh, when I was referring to that other gallery, several of the galleries that stopped advertising during the recession actually went out of business. And surprise. most of the ones that did not stop stayed in business. They had, they struggled to stay in business. I'm, I'm, but talk to me about that aspect. If you, if you, if you just say, Hey, I'll wait and see what happens. What, what kind of a risk are you putting your business in? Well, I mean, I was watching uh, uh, one of the shows on one of the stock market channels today, and they were talking about how if, if certain businesses stop, restarting is a nightmare. It's like there's certain engines you can't, or motors you can't stop. There's certain vehicles, I don't mean vehicles like cars, but there's certain things like that. It's that momentum. Stop them and start them again is onerous. It's extraordinarily hard, both in, in regaining momentum and velocity, in resources necessary to fuel the, 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 the positive pressure that's gonna need to, to start the movement again. It's just really, I mean, again, you have to realize that the world will not totally end. It's going to come back. It may have to be like that, but people will buy art. People who have the resources will continue to buy. They may buy differently, but if you are there for them and you are top of mind and you are allowing yourself to connect in deeper and more more inventive ways now than you normally could in the busy inattentive times that have been the norm up until a few weeks ago and will be the norm again in a few months this window is is rare and and the cost of 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 optimizing capitalizing harnessing and dominating right now for two or three months. I mean, I don't know, and I don't need to know what a page or two pages in your magazine costs. I'm just saying, I would think that that would be the, the best strategic investment an art gallery could make for the rest of their, uh, their viable life. Because this can be the propellant that can get you more, more, indelibly embedded in awareness, your artist more uh, established in the mind, your chance to connect them at more in more ways. I would use this inventively. I would use this creatively. I would use this in ways that nobody else does. I might have my ads be different than just pictorial, but I would really capitalize on this access uh, window and this concentration of attention window and this emotional need to be fulfilled window in ways that 
uh, I don't think everyone in the gallery business is recognizing. You know, you and I talked about this. I think we were in Miami together. You were doing a consulting session with us. And you said something about uh, oftentimes there's a spark that happens. A business can be in business for 20 or 30 years and going along and, you know, just going through their everyday thing. And then there's one thing, one event that occurs that is like a spark that just sets off the rocket and they go highly. You and I talked about that in the context of me doing a PBS show. And uh, the idea that this might be that moment where it could be their spark. Yeah, no, absolutely. If you think about it, I mean, when everyone else is retreating, when everyone else is paralyzed, you have the opportunity to literally take not just market share, but but basically top of mind awareness out of you know out of the market. You have a chance to take people who normally would probably, and I'm not a a psychologist or a neuroscientist, but they probably would spend this much of their time normally focused on art now you have a chance for them to spend not only this amount of time, but back and back and forth and over and over again. And if you are inventive, and it's not just a single picture, but you say, hey, we're doing every day a different different show. And you can do shows that you connect now to somebody's, somebody's, uh, whatever their studio is or their house. You could visit collectors. You can do so many really cool things that will engage even deeper. And in that engagement, it'll do two things. It'll, it'll, uh, it'll establish artists, but it will all also distinguish you in very, very, very unique ways in the mind of that collector, because you're doing stuff that's interesting, it's entertaining, it's enjoyable, it's stimulating, it's fascinating, it's dimensional, and it's therapeutic. Well, Jay, thank you so much. I know all the artists and galleries watching this are, are going to get a lot out of it. And, and I, I know that you're busy. Everybody's calling you for consulting at this time. And, and I just want to thank you for spending the time with us today. No, and I really I don't want to acknowledge, I think what you've created is such a vital, uh, it's a vital, how would I call it? Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a valve that will give them direct access. It's the greatest Right this moment, the greatest life, uh, you know, lifeblood you you as a gallery owner can give to a collector that needs you right now. They actually need you for for their own their own great you know peace of mind. Take advantage of that. You could I mean there's never been. We're, we, here's a, a one parting thought: in our lives, we are rewarded in our lives for the amount of problems we solve and the amount of opportunities we make possible for others. Everyone today is in enormous strife. We are suffering. If you can help relieve and and, uh, temporarily stop that suffering and turn suffering into joy, and that joy is dimensionally something beyond what your competitors even see to do. And you're introducing them to experiences and opportunities and, and creations that can really transform their mindset, their lives, their, I mean, this is just a wonderful opportunity if people grasp it. That's all I want to say. Thank you, Jay. You're welcome, Eric. Well, I hope you found Jay Abraham helpful. Remember, take action, don't wait. This is not the time to, to delay. Just operate. Uh, this is your opportunity to stand out. Operate more than usual. Use this as a chance to stand out. If you've not seen my blog, I have one on Sunday mornings where I talk about life and philosophy and stuff. It's uh, sometimes art-related, sometimes not, but it's up to about a quarter million readers And I'm pretty proud of that. It's pretty cool. It's called Sunday Coffee. And you can find it for free and sign up at coffeewitheric.com. Well, I'm Eric Rhodes, publisher and founder of Plein Air Magazine, Fine Art Connoisseur Magazine, uh, Newsletters Realism Today, Plein Air Today, Fine Art Today, American Watercolor. It's just lots going on. The conventions, books, videos, 
Lots happening. I want to thank you for listening today.